and uh, basically uh, explaining his qualifications as a member of the House of Representatives and member of the Union Parliament, uh, starts his, um, his email by referring to some of the consequences of the policies affecting the Rohingyas, and among others, for example, he touches upon the, um, uh, the question of education, and uh, uh, in particular, he says, I quote, since 2012 violence, the ordinary university students, since 2012 violence, the ordinary university students are sitting at home and they have no opportunity to continue their studies. This is just to reinforce some of the points uh, that were made before in terms of the kind of impact that the Rohingya population is having in Myanmar at this, uh, in, in the last years. Uh, he made also an interesting point about uh, another issue that was raised which, raised, which was the restriction of movement. He says at a certain point, I quote, I think restriction of movement is a global practice of governments to punish, to punish criminals. So he's basically putting the accent in, on the fact that why is the Rohingya are deserving this sort of treatment, uh, you know, like one whole ethnic group is basically being treated as a criminal group. He says, but Rohingya's freedom of movement is restricted without committing any crime by Rohingya. So the Rakhine state become as if a prison for Rohingya. And that's why, and it goes back to the current events in terms of uh, sea refugees, thus they are taking a risky journey in search of better life in Malaysia, unquote. Now, it comes to the end of his email um, where he basically, sorry, I'm scrolling slowly, um, refers to a series of uh, some of uh, the root causes uh, of the current situation against the Rohingya and Rakhine state. And this would be just the last points I'm going to mention. So he lists a series of points. And he mentions first the denial of full-fledged citizenship, which is an issue that's been raised other times today, the treatment of the Rohingyas as if foreigners and trapping them for naturalization, which is an issue only applicable, uh, applicable to foreigners. Uh, there is a third point, the uncertainty of the citizenship processing that we heard also in the, la in the previous session. Uh, the issue again uh, of denial of the Rohingya ethnicity uh, accusation being moved, this is the fifth point, to the Rohingya as illegal immigrants, or what has been said also in other sessions as Bengali coming from Bangladesh. Uh, again, it goes back to the lack of freedom of movement, six point, seven point, lack of access to higher education that we mentioned before, uncertain life at uh, internal displaced people's camps, IDP camps, nine, restriction of marriage, and ten, bad social economic life. So these are just some of the points that um, he, he shared uh, with us today. So unfortunately, as Tanya said, he was uh, barred from coming. He was blocked from coming to, to Oslo, to Norway. And uh, again, here with uh, his contribution. And now um, we are going back to our uh, sessions, because this was uh, a remain from the other session. So our session will, will focus mainly on the diaspora, and basically on the perspective from the diaspora and uh, I think also on some of the advocacy uh, uh, initiatives that have come out of the uh, diaspora. Uh, now the first person to speak will be Nurul Islam, and uh, he's a Rohingya lawyer and chairman of the Arakan Rohingya National Organization uh, based in the UK. Uh, his uh, sort of task for today has been labeled as giving us an analysis of the Rohingya problem, which is not going to be, uh, uh, you know, an easy or quick uh, thing task. But um, yeah, we kindly asked him to f to share with us a few points of his analysis, and then he will be around also tomorrow, so he may be able to further expand. But uh, yeah, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. My topic is in fact the analysis of the problem. First, uh, I must go very quickly because the time calls fit. And the Rohingyas are the most uh, persecuted minority in the world. Their problem is uh, ethnic, religious, and political persecution. To lead our kind of Due to 
persecution about uh, more than 1.5 million people in the Sunday diaspora. These people are still hoping to return to their faith. The popular slogan said in, in Myanmar, in Burma, <coughs> is to be Burmese, to be Buddhist. In line with this slogan, the Buddhists are kind in our camp. They claim that the Rohingyas are Rohingya, Muslim Rohingyas, nothing to be like. They are just kicked out of the country. They are despised and hated. Their religious <laughs> Islam is uh, compared to any animal doctrine. They are hated like a dog. And uh, in flat viruses. And uh, ugly orders. This is in fact uh, what happens systematically racism. I have to say that this is systematic racism in Islam. Particularly from 1962, Rwanda has been subjected to institutionalized persecution and the grave, I mean, the human <coughs> violation and restriction of their domestic freedom. And uh, we have uh, two unprecedented refugee influxes, one in 1978, the other in 1991 and 92, to Bangladesh and other countries. Although repatriation, of course, this is a forced repatriation, the outflow of refugees or Rohingya people from our country is still continuing due to continued persecution in And in 1982, Nguyen adopted, elected the most unparalleled in the world, in fact, most oppressive citizenship law, which made the Rohingyas rent at the Rohingyas status, and a state of way in their own homeland. Today, in fact, the Rohingya becomes a state in their own homeland, and refugees beyond the border to part. When it's a lack of recent UN sponsored census, which was done, carried on this last year, for claiming themselves their very ethnic name Rohingya. That means Rohingya become black people. The invalidation of white card, although this card is not a welcome I mean, document, which has been forced on the Rohingya people, but the invalidation of this card has put Rohingya in cash 22. They should be in a state of this car. They should be right away granted the full citizenship that they desire. Thousands of uh, Rohingya children have been blacklisted, or their parents have so called unauthorized, not illegal, not illegal men, so called unauthorized marriages, or they have parent, their parents exceeded two child <laughs> limit. This is a violation of the terms of the UN Convention on the Right of the Child, 1989, which Obama ratified in 1991. <coughs> After 70 years from 1942, Rohingya massacre in Arakan, <coughs> that year anti-Muslim violence occurred and reoccurred again in Arakan and other parts of Burma. As a result, from about 3,000 to 5,000 people were killed, drawn, or missing. Blaming the Rohingya, the president faced it with prejudice, said that the only solution to this violence is to send these people to refugee camp or to the dark countries. That means he is officially sponsoring the Rohingya ethnic cleansing policy. Under extreme conditions, Rohingya took dangerous voyages across the ocean to Southeast Asian countries. From right from 2008, 
Even now, which is after the violence, it, it increased dramatically. From 1900 to 2012, at least 1,000 people have taken the journey by boat. Often these people were uh, victimized at the hands of the traffickers, human traffickers, and greedy exploiters and smugglers. The rich died when they were turned away or pushed out to sea, sometimes having their boat engine confiscated. Burma must be held responsible for these human tragedies, man-made tragedies, including recent discovery of uh, traffic people in southern Thailand, bordering the northern state of Paris in, the, in, 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 in Malaysia, and the current heartbreaks of the thousands of abandoned, distressed, and traumatized good people, good people at sea, where more than 100 of them were died of starvation or hunger. This is a regional problem, having dimension in the perspective of internationalism. Burma cannot harm the internal affairs of the country. Violation of human rights cannot be termed international uh, internal affairs of the country. This is no more available in international law. ASEAN should find out a regional solution in cooperation with the affected countries in the region and international community. The Rohingya problem has two aspects, political and humanitarian. It is violated the several articles and provisions of the Inter Universal Declaration of Human Rights and other international <coughs> human rights instruments. The violation against Rohingya is not isolated incident, but part of the broad pattern of the policies implemented by the ruling government. They are systematic, consistent, widespread, that amount to crimes against humanity. Yes, it is a crime against humanity. Based on the definitions of the Roma Statute of the International Criminal Court, it can be inferred that crimes against humanity of murder, extermination, deportation, or forcible transfer of population, imprisonment, or other severe deprivation of physical liberty, <coughs> torture, rape, and sexual violence, forced pregnancy or other human acts have been committed against the Rohingya people, it is often, it is often forced removal of members of the Rohingya community from their ancestral Rukundra of Afghan, claimed by the hostile Rakhine people with a view to rendering northern Afghan an ethnically homo homogeneous, recognized Buddhist region. So it is ethnically it is ethnically the treatment of the Rohingya and action against them by the government this is indicated made in manifest intention of the government that the, the intention is to wipe out this Muslim minority community from their ancestral homeland. <coughs> so this is this is, this is uh, under the UN Convention of the 1948 con Genocide Convention. This is a convention, this is a genocide. Although carried out slowly, maybe in, 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 uh, to avoid international uh, attention and our prosecution under the UN Convention. Okay? But this is genocide under Genocide Convention, although people are calling it slow genocide, or hidden genocide, or that genocide, or that genocide, <coughs> genocide is genocide, right? maybe this is a for purposely or strategically reason the article is genocide. Regarding the, this, Professor Gilberto, a, a statement of the president of the genocide was, stated that Eight stages of genocide had been in full play in the case of the Rohingya people. On 16 May 2015, this morning we had Professor Peg 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 Green eh, from the uh, from the London University, Queen's University. They said that they are the, this is also genocide. They also they agreed. 
She said the current crisis is direct result of the government sponsored action against the Rohingya pushed together among the genocides in Myanmar. The atrocity crimes, I call it atrocity crimes, against the Rohingyas have been committed with full impunity and knowledge of the government and the violation has not been fully or impartially investigated and none of the perpetrators have been brought into justice. The government has no intention to resolve the issue while putting the more than 140,000 Rohingya in apartheid-like um, concentration camp. The most, in the state of that, the most controversial Rakhine action plan and so-called religion and race protection laws have been, uh, are about to introduce or implement in order to cut the damage the Rohingya and other Muslims of the country. To the great grief of the Rohingya people, the opposition leader, the Aung San Suu Kyi, is uncharacteristically silent in a situation of injustice in a situation of injustice. The extremists are kind with the government reject every recommendation, resolution, and envoy, envoy from the United Nations and, and from wise US. That's why the United States ambassador to Burma, direct mission, he said that Burma, Rwanda, were, 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 are oppressed by everybody in the country. For about Nearly for nearly three years, all diplomatic efforts appeared exhausted, and when they continue to face existential threat, their existence now at a stake. However, in this situation, a UN <coughs> commissioner inquiry is most urgent to investigate the mass atrocity crime in Arkan and other parts of Burma in order to publicly announce the findings and to bring about possible, responsible to justice. It is also vital you are intervening in the matter on ground of humanitarianism. This is humanitarian intervention for a specific purpose, a specific purpose of international protection, providing international protection to the defenseless warrior and alleviating the suffering of the victims. What is the solution? In brief, solution is that by all legal standards, the Rohingyas are national born citizens and ethnic nationality of Burma. <coughs> they are national born citizens. Rohingya did not come to Burma, the second time. Rohingya did not come to Burma. Burma came to the Rohingyas. As Nobel Lurie Professor Amitabh Singh has said, it is not an immigration issue, but a joint conspiracy. For a permanent solution, the root causes of the Rohingya problem must be addressed. In addition, number one, the government must recognize the citizenship and ethnic rights of the Rohingya. They should be able to peacefully coexist, I mean peacefully coexist in Arakan as equal with the collective rights. With the collective rights. Because we are a people. Number two. The political and democratic process in Burma should be all inclusive. Rohingya must be a part of it. Number three, unrestricted humanitarian aid must be allowed. All persecution and ghettoization must be ended. Number three, repatriation and rehabilitation of the Rohingya refugees, both inside and outside the country, should be allowed to be rehabilitated in their original places and properties. Number five, and the last one, the government should sincerely contribute towards implementing a genuine dialogue from promoting reconciliation between the two sister communities of Arkan, the Muslims, Rohingya, and the Buddhist Rakai, and for the relaxation of tension and the restoring peace in Arkan. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot also for keeping uh, to the time. Uh, we have uh, as a second speaker, Dr. Ambia Purvi, who's a pediatrician uh, and a lobby member with the European Regional Council in Germany. I think um, 
she will be speaking about the public health implications of this crisis. And now somebody can give us a little technical yeah. help because I have my responsibility. I just want to know how to present here. Yeah, because it's not a here. Sorry for this, uh, <laughs> for this technical. Please, the floor is here. Ladies and gentlemen, speak up. Microphone. Put it closer to your mouth. So I started it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, our speakers, good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum. I take this opportunity to thank the organizers, most of them have left already, I think so, and especially Dr. Kazarni, to inviting me to speak on the crucial matter of decades of abysmal persecution of our Rohingya people, and particularly its implications on public health and day-to-day -day lives. As I'm working professionally in the medical field, Today I would like to clearly highlight more on some serious and urgent health implications. I shall start with a quotation from Kosovo Masaka. Yes. A massacre is not necessarily committed only with knives. I repeat again, a massacre is not necessarily repeated only, committed only with knives, but it is in other forms of persecution which would lead to full genocide, full-fledged genocide, which is apparent in Myanmar on our Rohingya community. UN had today stated as Rohingya, one of the highly persecuted groups in history, they are the victims of worst form of crimes against humanity. Hmm. Another slide? Yeah. It's slow. The Burmese government systematic and institutionalized persecution includes denying of ethnic identity denying access to health care, murdering, raping, and many more hideous and unimaginable forms of torture. They have also put restrictions on the fundamental human rights, freedom of religious practice, freedom of education, freedom of movement, freedom to get married, and solely decide on the size of their families freedom of speech to a normal and balanced livelihood. 